Well, I had never thought of it. When I got out of the city, I thought, well, I'll find a job somewhere. But everybody was gone, and the Army was drafting everybody at our age, especially the guy just coming out of CC camp. And I, I just didn't want the Army, so I joined the Navy. And I had never been out of the state of Arkansas when I joined the Navy. <laughs> and I went to San Diego to boot camp. And uh, we had target practice one day we were out. And I've got a notebook somewhere that I heard the 16-inch guns fire for the first time. Now, now I may never find it, but I've had it sometime where. <laughs> what was that like? Well, it's kind of scary in a way because it made your ship sink and you don't know what it's, what it's going to do. That's the biggest gun I ever heard. Well, the biggest gun I ever heard for mm -hmm. all the time. 16 inch, that's a big gun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, they put, they signed me a battle station and I was on the shell deck of number four turret. And uh, there was, three, nine men in that, and each one was assigned to a hoist, three men to a hoist, and we put the projectors up in the hoist of the gun chamber, and the people down in the below us in the powder room, see, we had a six inch, well, they called it, you know, a better projector, a bullet that big, six inches. And the powder can was 36 inches long, six inches long. And they put it up there and dropped the projector in, dropped the powder in behind it, and jammed it in the barrel, and it automatically fired. No two guns went off at the same time on the ship. It was sinker so that you could be continuous fire, but the guy. Each gun and five uh, tours went off separately. For a concussion would have, well, it would have, if it all went off at the same time, it would have split or shit. That's how strong the concussion was. About three minutes to eight o'clock, it come in, and I was on the fantail with a buddy of mine, he and I was fixed to go ashore, celebrate his birthday. I had $6.50 in my pocket, and we was going to celebrate his birthday. And the, the first three bombs that I saw, one fell in the, the water, water, the next one hit the runway of Ford Island, and the third one hit the hangar deck on Fort Island where the PBY planes were kept, the ones that land on water and takes off and everything. And uh, when they banked up and Potter said, my God, that's Japs. And about that time, General Quarters sounded. We went to our General Quarters. And, but I think Potter was in the, I think he was up in the, in the tour tonight on the shell deck, I think that's where it was. Anyway, we didn't have the same station. And uh, we got to torpedoed there. There's a ship towed up alongside of us that was a wooden hole mine layer. A torpedo went in under us, under it, and hit us in the engine room. And the concussion from us blew a hole in that wooden hole mine layer, and it was sinking, so they drew it aft of us, keeping from pinning us to the dock. But we, of course, we wasn't off the bottom of time that far, you know, in the harbor. And we settled on the bottom. That's why we didn't sink. So they were perfecting underground underwater welding at that time. 
So they put sheets of metal over the outside and welded it to it, and then pumped the water out of the engine room. And we came back to the stage, and when we got to Vallejo, California, our parts were sitting on the dock where we were going to be repaired by the dry dock. And uh, I think in about 30, 35, 40 days, we were fixed and ready, and we went, went right straight back to Pearl and all over there. And I stayed well, I was in and out of Pearl, and, and I missed the Coral Sea battle, and I missed the Medway battle. But from then on, every battle that we fought from then on, I didn't care about the little bitty islands that we took over, like Iwo Jima. It wasn't nasty because, but, well now, it wasn't, I'll take that all back now. Iwo Jima happened after we were sunk. And uh, the plane banked to go up we seen the rising star, sun, mm -hmm. red sun on their plane. And that's when Potter said, well, that's the Japs. And about that time, General Quarter sounded, and we knew that it was head. But we got torpedoed, and we couldn't fire our main batteries because we couldn't elevate them high enough. So they dropped me out and told me to come up and go back on deck to help spot aircraft. Well, when I hit, the, I had to come out of the turret and hit the deck, the bosun mate, she was, well, these are boss, grabbed me in and gave me a water hose and told me, said, watch that barbed off and his blood and everything. Mm -hmm. And I asked Chuck, I says, who was that? He says, I didn't say who it was, I told you to wash that off. Well, of course I did. I went to get him washing it off. And there was a shoe coming down the water gully on the ship. And as quick as I seen that shoe, I knew who it was because it wasn't a man on the ship who could shine a pair of shoes like a pencil could. So I dropped the hole and went over and I grabbed Chuck and I shook him. I said, that was pencil, wasn't it? He said, yeah. He said, you know, that's all you need to know. He said, now get back and wash it off. So I went on and uh, I found out later Pencil was killed with shrapnel and they cut him through here and blow this part of him away. And that's, well, after it kind of calmed down that night, well, I, I guess I was scared, but I didn't know it. That night, we was standing in watch and, uh, we got word that some planes was coming in. And uh, we, uh, well, we didn't know. Of course, we didn't have radar and all that kind of stuff then. And then we thought, well, boy, here we go again. And we all went to General Quarters. We'd been General Quarters about 30 minutes, and they put us to four on, four off in General Quarters. And we found out it was our own planes coming in from the state. And, uh, but I guess you might say that's a really, the only time I was really scared is when the second wave is coming, or the rest of us. But we were tied up. Well, that night, that after, when the bombing was going on, I come on the deck clean it up. I seen the Arizona blow up. And I seen the Oklahoma capsize. That's a picture like that up there. Mm -hmm. 
it was on across the waterway from them and they capsized. Uh, Arizona was aft of us. And uh, Pennsylvania and uh, Quezon and Downs was in dry dock at our bow. We were fixing to go in there when they come out. And the bombs had hit all three of those ships. Pennsylvania was a battleship. Quezon Downs was a destroyers and it blew the destroyers off of the balance and they'd roll over to the on the side in the dry dock. 